In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today at Mass, we remember uh, today Carol Ostrander, and today we celebrate the feast day of St. Matthew, the Apostle and Evangelist. Uh, so we salute the author of that first gospel, sometimes also referred to as Levi, the tax collector who followed after Jesus, uh, and who also offered us his recollections recorded in the first of the gospels. Let us ask for his intercession and his protection this day, as we begin first acknowledging our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And we proclaim, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who with untold mercy were pleased to choose as an apostle, St. Matthew, the tax collector, grant that, sustained by his example and intercession, we may merit to hold firm in following you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were called, also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, or building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full statue of Christ. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, their message goes out through all the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. Not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. But he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. When people study St. Matthew's Gospel, one of the things that people will notice is it contains many references um, to Jewish traditions and quotations from Scripture. And that's oftentimes described really as the Gospel that is presented especially for Jewish Christians, for people with a Jewish background. Um, uh, St. Matthew is um, the community he was writing to and recording the Gospel for, traditionally is uh, thought of as the community in Jerusalem, and so it makes sense that it has a Jewish focus. But at the same time, remember that Matthew was a tax collector, and so in this sense he was really thought more of as equivalent to a Gentile, the tax collectors and Gentiles, so you would almost sort of that treat them in one uh, swoop, they were considered definitely sinners, um, reprobates. Wouldn't it have been better for Matthew to be sent out to the Gentiles, that maybe, in fact, that might have been a better use of his talents, lest his past somehow create a cloud of suspicion for Matthew amongst the Jews who came to believe in Jesus Christ? And, of course, St. Paul, St. Paul was someone who was such an excellent observer of the law, and he knew the law so well, and he, in fact, would boast of his observance of the law, um, especially as, as a Jew, wouldn't it have been better than for St. Paul, who knew the law so well, to be sent to the Jewish community? So it seems like God got it backwards. By sending Matthew and having him write to the Jewish community, it would have been better for him to go to the Gentiles. And St. Paul, instead of going to the Gentiles, maybe he should have been the one to speak to the Jews. Well, I will not say that God got it wrong. Okay, okay. So it's, it turns out that it would be exactly the opposite. Sometimes this is a surprise, um, a reminder that sometimes God confounds us not by doing what we think makes sense to us, but what makes sense to God. But maybe we can say a little bit more about that. Because one of the things that we would say, um, that we would try to overcome is the idea of division. We wouldn't want St. Paul or St. Matthew to be a source of division or a cause of scandal or a source of disunity. In fact, when St. Paul is writing in the first reading that we heard today, that was a theme that came out, the idea of preserving the unity of the Spirit. And this is one of the things the apostles do. They preserve the unity of the church. And in fact, we're even encouraged to um, strive to attain that unity of faith by building up the body of Christ. So these are some of the expressions that St. Paul tells us. So how is it that St. Matthew, as a tax collector who leaves his post and follows Jesus, how can this, in fact, be a source of unity? Um, we see what happens right after St. Matthew's conversion. Um, he then welcomes Jesus in his home and welcomes many other tax collectors and those who are known to be sinners. And we see disunity because the Pharisees quickly point this out, say, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? So you can see the, the contradiction, the, con the uh, contrast that is there. But here's where I think that there's a great insight in St. Paul's uh, letter to the Ephesians that we heard in our first reading. He encourages us to live in a manner that is worthy of the call that we have received. So just as St. Matthew was called, and as we are called. And then he qualifies it this way, or describes it this way, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, and then he begins to speak about unity of the Spirit. 
and especially peace. But listen to that humility and gentleness. If there's one thing that St. Matthew really um, shows us here is the idea of humility, of acknowledging his need for a savior. That we can say he came to the Lord Jesus because the divine physician called him and he knew that he was sick and he needed a spiritual doctor. Jesus has come to heal the sick, not the self-righteous. Um, that uh, the, those who are well do not need a physician, but those who are not well do need him. And St. Matthew recognizes this. Where is the bond of unity? What is it that unites us together? I think it would be the common recognition that every one of us has, which is really ultimately why we're here today, here this morning, is our recognition of our need for the divine physician, our recognition of our need for our Savior, that we need that doctor of souls to come to us to heal us. Um, we are not self-righteous, assuming that we are above our Lord, beyond his, his help, that we haven't figured out, Rather, in fact, we willingly acknowledge that we need his help, and that's what unites us. Humility, enough humility to recognize our need for the Savior. Gentleness and patience, bearing with one another in love, because we know that we have been loved by our Lord Jesus. So perhaps St. Matthew, as a sinner, or one who is known to be a, a sinner, uh, as a tax collector, maybe he is the perfect person to speak to the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem someone who has experienced the Lord's mercy and who can speak to the Lord's mercy. And in that sense, maybe, in fact, precisely, yes, it makes him a perfect representative. So we honor St. Matthew today, who followed Jesus as an apostle, but also who left us these precious words that we have recorded in the first gospel. It's a great source of inspiration for us, but let us not just simply learn from the words of the gospel, from, from the example of St. Matthew, who is ready to get up, to follow after Jesus, and ready to appreciate this offer that the Lord gives us of his mercy and his love. We stand now to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God, that especially under the guidance of our Holy Father and our bishops, preserving that apostolic tradition and the faith handed down from the apostles, that we might grow in unity in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for those who hear the call of our Lord Jesus and respond to it. We pray for those who are seeking conversion to the Catholic faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray that every one of us might grow in humility, humbly acknowledging our sins and our need for the divine physician. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and the suffering, that they might be cured of their illness and their ailments, for physical, for emotional, and for spiritual health, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all of the faithful departed, remembering the deceased members of the Ostrander family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for the protection of our religious liberties, our freedom of the church, our freedom of conscience, and the freedoms of the church, as we say, Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate anew the memory of St. Matthew, we bring you sacrifices and prayers, O Lord, humbly imploring you to look kindly on your church, whose faith you have nourished by the preaching of the apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, for you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, their foremost merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and Lewis's assistant bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, 
the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Sharing in that saving joy, O Lord, with which St. Matthew welcomed the Savior as a guest in his home, we pray. Grant that we may always be renewed by the food we receive from Christ, who came to call not the just, but sinners to salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. It's interesting, Matthew's name is also sometimes referred to as Levi. The tribe of Levi was the priestly tribe, and so St. Matthew, really true to his name, or true to his, his name's sake, uh, then was really called away from profane things as a tax collector to sacred things. He was called to then be a priest of the new covenant. Um, and so I wonder if sometimes that's a good thing uh, when we talk about calling uh, young men to the priesthood is really to, we, we're so immersed in the world, sometimes it's good to know that if the Lord is calling us away from the profane to the sacred, from the worldly to the spiritual, that in fact is quite a noble task. And so we uh, do pray for vocations as well. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.